Hey guys, Greg Benz here with a quick overview of some of my favorite new features in Lumenzia version 9. Now the first thing you'll notice when you launch the panel is the welcome screen now has an optimized Photoshop button. And by clicking on it, Lumenzia is going to go and check and see if there's anything about the Photoshop preferences that can be improved. And I've already run it, so it's not finding anything. However, if it did, it would offer you the ability to choose which enhancements you'd like to have automatically applied to give you better luminosity masks. We we'll go ahead and click OK. The other piece of this, though, is also going to be to install some optional extras, including custom menus, meaning up top here, the toolbar, meaning the left hand side, and custom workspace. By choosing these, when I click OK, it's going to go ahead and upgrade Photoshop to the way that you see me normally use it in my demo. So we've now got the workspace set up the way I want. I've got the custom menus that are all color coded, ready to go, and the toolbar has been slightly altered. You could further tweak these by going up to Edit menus and toolbar or up to window workspace to make some changes there or even launch other panels. So if there's any favorite additional panels you need, you can launch them. But at this point, I'd say I'm ready to go and we can dive into the edit. What I have here are two different versions of this scene here. I got kind of a handheld, darker and lighter exposure. And what I like to do is bring out more detail in these rocks and a little more detail in the sky, just improve the overall detail of this scene. And so I'm going to do an exposure blend and begin that by clicking on pre-blend. Most of the options here look like they have in the past. With one exception, that is the align now has a drop down with new options. And the bottom here, leave edges alone. This is the legacy behavior, meaning it will just align things. And if you have edges that aren't perfectly aligned, you may have white pixels in some of the frames or to you know, transparent pixels. And in the past, you'd have to manually remove them or crop them or whatever you want to do. Now Lumenzia automatically will take care of them for you. So you can choose to fill them and it will use a content aware fill to automatically give you a little bit more sky or rock or whatever is missing or crop transparent edges, which is the method I prefer, which will just simply el eliminate them. So you have an absolutely perfect image and those one or two extra pixels that you don't need are removed from the scene. So go ahead and click Blend Documents. And here you can see I've got my output. I've got my darker layer with my lighter one sorted on top. And if I shift click on the mask, you can see both of these layers and they are perfectly aligned with no missing pixels on the edges, no white pixels. So looks great and we're ready to go. To begin this blend, I need to find a way to start painting these darker areas without spilling over into the sky. So I'd say this looks like a darks selection and I'm going to go up to the D's and I'm going to make one little quick change here. I'm going to change the size of Lumenzia. So go up to the interface size and go to the large compact, which is what I prefer. And I'm just going to put basics underneath it. So I think I'm going to change a little bit this layout here. So you can always change these things after you've loaded the, uh, the workspace. What I want to do is click on D for a darks preview. And you can see it's grabbing all these darker pixels but it's also grabbing some of the darker parts of the sky. And I'd like to eliminate these. And if we look at the original image, of course, things are very blue here. So I'd like less inclusion of the blues. And I can easily do that by just clicking on the color conversion in the orange layer stack from Lumenzia and just play with the blue slider to go and eliminate that. In this case, increasing the blues removes them from the darker selection. So I've got a nice selection of my foreground area with no risk that I'm going to paint over into the sky. So I'm going to load that as my selection by clicking on cell. And at this point, I can just click on my layer mask, make sure I've got white loaded, hit B for my paintbrush. I've got a nice large brush at high opacity and low flow. And I'm just going to start brushing over these areas to reveal more detail. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm getting a little bit more than I wanted, meaning that everything looks good, but I don't know if I want to lighten it quite this much. I'd like to maintain a little bit of Dark Shadows look. And what I can do rather than try to really monkey with the, the amount of painting I do is just fade. If I grab this new slider in the basics panel, I can get the exact amount of the last result I want. So as I bring it down here to around 25%, I get about 25% of the painting. Watch what happens to that mask as I go to higher levels. So this is just fading the last thing I did. If we went up to edit fade, it'd be the same thing as playing with this slider here, but I'm just going to do it through the slider here and move it until I get the amount that I want. And I think this looks really good. So I'm going to stick with that, but I also want to bring out a little bit more detail in these highlight edges of the rocks here. 
the selection that I have right now, if we click on check cell to preview the selection, of course, everything that's dark is pretty well selected. What I'd like to do is have these areas more selected than the darker areas here. And we can do that through a subtracted selection. Now, normally I would load a selection and then I'd load another selection and subtract it. But in the new version of Lemenzia, we can do things a little bit more quickly. In fact, we can load the last preview we had by now clicking on this circular arrow. So once you've used you know, cell, mask, or some other application of your preview, the last one you've done can be reloaded by just clicking here. And it loads these orange layers. And it's not just simply reloading them as the darks 1.5 that I had by clicking this button. It actually loads the customization I made. So my color conversion, where I move the blues all the way up to the right, it's loading that exact same set of values. I have the improved sky ready to go and I can reload this as a selection or I could of course make more changes, but I'm gonna load it as a selection and now I'd like a subtracted selection and I can jump straight to that by simply double clicking on the minus button and it will automatically go find something that's two levels darker. So darks 3.5 is two less than Darks 1.5, it's automatically subtracted it and given me an improved selection. If you click on check cell, you're able to visualize it. And you see now that's the selection we have where the highlights are more selected than the shadow areas. So let's click on check cell to make that active again. And just clicking on my layer mask and hitting B for a brush, I can go now and paint more into those highlight areas to give myself a little bit more of that rock detail without lightening up the darkest areas too much. And I can, of course, fade this back and determine exactly how much I want. And I think in this case, pretty much what I did was about right. So I really don't need to fade it back. That's looking really good in these shadow areas. Let's take a look now at how we might go and improve that sky. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control D to deselect. And actually one last thing I do wanna do, I wanna add a little bit of sharpness to this foreground. Normally when I do this, I like to do it as a smart object. I'm gonna go ahead and convert things to a smart object in a different way. If I command click so that both of these are selected and now with smart object in basics, if I go and see there's a new option to hold command to get a named smart object, I'm gonna command click on it and I get this prompt where I can choose what I wanna name my smart object. And what's gonna happen is that in the final output, when I open up my smart object, it will be labeled in a way that makes it more clear. So I'm just gonna call this blend from exposure blend and start the conversion. I could also choose to take any channels I have and pass them into the smart object as well, but that's not relevant here. And so I've got my new smart object that I named blend and that looks pretty standard, but if you double click it to edit the smart object, You'll see that when it opens up, I have my content, but also notice the tab, the name of the smart object is now something meaningful. It has this little SO indicating that it's a smart object and blend the name that I gave it. So this is really helpful when you have multiple open documents to know which ones are smart objects. And if you nest a smart object in a smart object in a smart object, like I often do, it's very helpful to track what to what. So it just gives you a better way of tracking things. I'm gonna close this with no changes. We don't need to do that but I do wanna go ahead and add a little bit of sharpening. So I'm gonna click on sharp. I'm gonna use the smart objects method, which will just work with what we have here using high pass. And I think just the default amount of high pass ought to work well here. And so we've just added a little bit of sharpness to our image. Let's move on now to the, uh, the sky. One of the new options in Lemenzia is to work with special channels. And if you like to work through selections, you can click on cell and use this top option, which has create special selection and you can work with different color models, HSB, lab, et cetera. I'm gonna cancel out of that. And instead, what I wanna do is actually create a layer. And the option for this is under this create special channels and layers up top right. And what I have the option to do now is choose which channels I'd like to make. I can pull up anything from red, green, blue, lab, CMYK, HSB or HSL or grayscale just check the options you wanna play with. In this image, uh, the sky is playing with cyan tones. I like the color channels from lab, maybe saturation from HSL. My thought process being that I'd like to play with some contrast enhancing you know, channels for these areas. And I think it'll make more sense when I just click preview. So what it's done is it's created all my requested layers here. I've got the lab, the CMYK, the HSB, HSL saturations ready to go here. And I have a preview dialog where I can cycle through and take a look at 
these different ones, finding the one I want to work with. And what I'm looking for here is not to use this in the normal blend mode, but to use this in some sort of other blend mode. So I can toggle the blend mode and see what happens if I'm in, say, you know, multiply and move through and find whatever is going to really enhance this sky here. I think what I want to do is go down to something like soft light is a nice way of enhancing contrast and now just find which channel does the best job of working in this area. And we can see with cyan just from before to after, I, I do think it does a nice job up top here. It's definitely getting to be too much at the bottom left and I'll have to deal with that, but that looks pretty good. I'm going to cycle through the different options with HSB saturation. It's a little flat. Same thing with HSL. Lab A channel, maybe. Lab B channel, I think that looks really nice. I like what it's doing for the clouds up here. Notice from before to after how nicely that works. So I think that's going to work just great. And what I'm going to do is choose keep the current preview layer, meaning keep this Lab B that's active in the soft light blend mode and discard these other ones that I'm not using. So just click that and I'm done. And I've got that enhancement for the sky. Now I just need a way of targeting only this sky area because of course I don't necessarily need to make the changes in the rock and in fact I think it makes them look a little bit worse. That's not uncommon that you have a change you need to make locally. So we need a way of selecting just this sky and thankfully in the new Photoshop there is a way to do that. You go up to edit and we're going to go up to, I'm sorry, go to select sky and in doing so you would ideally get a selection of the sky. However, the built-in select sky tool in Photoshop works only from the current layer. It doesn't give you any real options and you can see it's selecting rock. It's missed all this sky over here. So it's a great tool, but you sometimes need to kind of tweak it. I'm going to hit command D to deselect that and instead work through the new option in the Lumenzia basics panel for sky. When I click on that, I have the ability to work with sky selections and sky replacements with additional options. So it's not just a convenient way to get at these, but also to enhance them. So with selecting the sky, I can sample from all layers for a better result. I can also invert the selection if I want to select the foreground instead of the sky. And I don't have any reason to replace the sky here, but I do want to mention that you can also sample from all layers for better result. And you can also pick a one-off source image. Normally with sky replacement, you have a library that you have to add a new sky to the library in order to use it. With this option, when you click replace sky, you'll actually be able to choose the sky you want as a one-off and just start using it right away. So it just makes things a little bit easier. So let's use select the sky with sample all layers. And when I click this, we'll get a sky selection, but this time it's given us the exact selection of the sky that we want. There's no rock inclusion and we got all of the sky here. So I think that looks really good. And I'm just going to load this as a layer mask by clicking for a new layer mask. So now my adjustment is only hitting those areas of sky. And I think that's looking really good. Although I don't really need all this stuff down here. So I'm going to hit B for my brush, switch to black and just go paint out that area of sky. There's no reason to add more of that contrast on there. That's only making those blues more extreme. They're already too much. So we'll take one quick little change there and looking before and after, I think that just balances the sky. There's a little bit more blue here, a little more contrast. I like that overall balance. And I'm thinking I maybe can push this contrast even a little bit further. Let's go ahead and select the sky once again. And this time what I want to do is use the contrast tool built into Lumensi. So I'm going to command click it to use luminosity blend mode. We'll let it feather and it will automatically help improve the contrast there. I'm going to grab the slider here, which will adjust the feathering on this mask and just make it a little bit more targeted here. So now we have this adjustment, adding some more contrast to the sky. And I will leave it down here, but try and remove some of this. So let's, let's go ahead and deal with that now. This area should be using really a lot less saturation. I need some way of helping to target that. So what I'm thinking is I can try the new gamut feature in Lumetia, which is an out of gamut selection tool. When I click on it, you get an option to choose from any installed profile you have for RGB. 
And you can also narrow it down. So I could say only look at the printer profiles and you get a smaller list, whatever you need to work with here, or just the user profiles. You can see, you know, just these ones that I've installed myself for printing. But really what you're picking here is the profile. What it's going to do is find the degree to which a given pixel is out of gamut for this selected profile. So using a regular paper profile, I'm just going to look and see, you know, what's out of gamut, which ought to target some things like that that are pretty extreme. Click OK. And you can see I've got this preview now showing that these areas here are quite out of gamut. And the degree to which they're out of gamut is going to be shown here by you know, just how targeted these areas are. So these pixels are far more out of gamut than you know these over here, and this is in gamut. Now what I can do is load this into an HSL adjustment by just clicking the HSL icon. Now I'm gonna double click on my HSL adjustment, click on the targeted adjustment tool, just go straight to this blue, click and drag left to reduce it. And it's gonna help bring out that blue in a really nice natural way from before to after. And you can see how it's worked in the areas that were most out of gamut. The sky that looked great up here, we're not playing with that because that was in gamut, things look fine. And that looks really nice and clean and just much more natural to my eyes. The last thing I'm thinking here is maybe a quick vignette. So I'm gonna hit M for the rectangular marquee, click and drag here. And then I'm gonna shift click on vignette, which will give me a vignette with a blend if so that it protects the shadows as it darkens the edges. You can see from before to after how that just kind of tightens up the top here without punishing these areas of rock that would get too dark with a regular vignette. Overall, we've gone from this initial starting point here to after with just a couple of quick adjustments. And hopefully that gives you a good sense of what's in Lamentia version nine. But to learn more, go click on the top right and you can choose to click on release notes. So you can see all the 170 changes that are made in Lamentia version nine. And to learn more about Lamentia, be sure to click onto this next video.